Greetings and hello again, BUSN 1360 Software Applications for Business Students. I'm Dr. McGrory, and I'm here today to help you with your first grader, which is for the Word Chapter 1. So these are the hands-on exercises, which we also call graders. Now, I'm assuming that you have watched the first video that gives you an overview of how to prepare for this video. And with that done, those preparations, we're ready to get started. So let me close my title slide here, my PowerPoint. And here I have on my desktop this Word 1 folder. By the end of the semester, you may have several folders, Word 1, 2, 3, 4, Excel 1, 2, 3, 4, the Capstone Projects, PowerPoint 1, 2, 3, 4. We start at the beginning with Word 1. So I'm going to double click to open that folder. Inside this folder, I'm looking for the instruction file. And I can see that here, so I'm going to double click that to open it. Here it is. And I like to just get a lay of the land, so let's find out what's going on. Here's my project description. In preparation for a class, you are assisting at the Middleton Community Career Center. You develop a document that includes a sample cover letter and resume. We all need to have those, right? Cover letter and resume. The document is formatted with styles and a page border. In addition, you include a watermark and document properties to better identify the document. So these are things that you may actively remember going through in the simulation. So now we're going to kind of put that to work. We've got Word installed on our computer, so let's see what the first instruction is. Start Word. Well, we know we can just double click the file to do that, but it has to be on our computer. It's not in a browser. Download and open the document. Now it's going to begin with your name. Your last name is going to be at the start of it. But some key things that you want to look for is that this is your file on Word and that this is the Chapter 1 file that we're working on. It's the HOE or the hands-on exercise and it's related to job. It says Grader has automatically added your last name to the beginning of the file name. So we have that. Let's go ahead and do Step 1. Now for me, it's just showing this as student, okay? And that's because I'm logged in as an instructor. I double clicked the file, I see Word is opening, and now I can see that that document is open, and what's the first thing we need to do? Enable editing. So I'm gonna do that. When I do, my view changed a little bit. I can see more of my document. And Word is already recognizing. Isn't Word smart? It says, I, I see you're working on a resume. Resume Assist can help. Open it from the Review tab. Eh, not right now. Got it. I'll get rid of that. Just quickly looking, if I look in this lower left corner, it says that I have three pages to this. So if I scroll down a little bit, you know, just to kind of see what's going on. Oops, it's kind of jumping around on me. See that third page? You can see it better if I come down here. I can change and zoom out so that I can see from kind of a bird's eye view my document. And you can see, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, you can see all three pages. But, you know, I'm just looking at it right now. I actually probably want to zoom in on page one because I'm going to start from the beginning. <clears throat> okay, second instruction. Before it gives me the instruction, give me a little overview. It says displaying non-printing, something that does not print. Non-printing characters can assist with troubleshooting a document. I use them all the time. I seldom have them turned off. They're always on on my computer. For example, what if you are leaving too many spaces between words and this results in a grammatical mistake when the problem is simply a number of spaces? Here's what they're saying. They're saying, look at look at like right here. Is that one space? Is it two spaces? Right? How can I see that? It says by showing these non-printing characters like a space, like how did this paragraph stop here and how did I start a new one? Well, I probably hit the enter key, right? But I can't see that unless I turn on these non-printing characters. And that's what we're going to do, very easy. So it says, display the non-printing characters, and it gives us a bunch of stuff. Click or position the insertion point before the page break at the bottom of page one. And then, 
insert text from this existing file called letter. Remember from the previous video, I'm not going to repeat everything. We're not worried about dot doc x. Go watch the previous video. Okay, so we got a lot of stuff going on here. That's actually, to tell you the truth, one reason why I print them so that as I'm talking to you, uh, I can remember, quite frankly. Okay, so I'm over here and I've, uh, I'm sorry, I've opened my, let me go to my uh, work file, okay, and it says display non-printing characters. This is the easy part. See this right here? I'm on the home tab. I look across and what this is, is it's like an editor's mark that you might see on one of your English paper papers. When your instructor says, hey, put a new paragraph here, and they put a big backwards P, that's what that is, and it says, show me those marks. So there they are. What does this show me? Well, it says that after somebody typed October 18th, 2024, they hit the Enter key one time, and they must have done some settings to cause such a big gap right there. But they did because there's, they only hit the enter key one time. Then they typed presumably their name and they pressed the enter key. They typed, oh, I'm sorry, to the employer, the person they want to review their cover letter. Then they typed human resource manager. They pressed the enter key, right? And they filled out the address and every line they created a paragraph not what you would think of in English class as a paragraph, but that's what Word considers this to be. That's a paragraph. Every one of those is a paragraph. Now, what happened next? Well, we saw when I zoomed out that this was on one page and then the resume started on another page, which is exactly what you want. So how did they make Word start a new page? They uh, made a page break. Now in the simulation assignment, you learned how to do that. I'll tell you a little trick. In addition to going through the menus, you can simply do control enter and that will insert that page break. So that's a little tip for you. It makes you faster when you know these keyboard commands. Page break is control enter. Okay, so zooming back in, we were already learning a lot. We've opened the document, we have displayed, that's a toggle button, meaning it toggles on and it toggles off and on, I'm sorry, on and it toggles off. Okay, so they told us to click before to make our insertion point. And the insertion point is that flashing bar. And the significance, the importance of that flashing bar is that any activity that we do, typing, inserting a picture, um, inserting whatever they tell us to do next is going to happen where that flashing bar is. So click the insertion point before the page break at the bottom of page one, there we are, and insert text from an existing file called letter. Okay, well, let me think here. What are those steps? I have to insert, I have to insert. So when I look across the top, I'm gonna go to insert. Let me just kind of start looking. Well, I'm not inserting a new page. I'm not inserting a table or an illustration. I'm not inserting, well, you know, that's tempting, isn't it? Reuse files. But what I remember from that simulation assignment is that it was under text in this group, and it was an object, and it was text from file. So I'm going to click that. Now, here's the next important step. Where did I place those files that I downloaded? Where is this letter file that I'm going to insert? Well, for me, I saved that on my desktop and I saved it in a folder called Word One. So now I can see all the Word files inside of that Word One folder and they told me to insert letter and it's right before the page break. So I've selected it, I'm going to click insert, and before the page break, it inserted that letter, the text from it. Pretty cool. Okay. Well, I like to, when I have successfully completed a step, I like to save my work. Very important because if something happens, I don't want to have to redo that. So I want to make sure that I save it. But that being said, oops, let me get my mouse here. 
Let's go back to the instructions because we've already finished instruction number two. Let's go to task number three here, instruction three. Click or position the insertion point after the words customer support near the middle of page one and press enter. Then I'm going to type this phrase, online troubleshooting, and I'm going to press enter. Then I'm going to type technical support, but I'm not going to press enter. All right, let me minimize this and go back to this. It told me that I need to find the words customer support in what was it the near the middle of the page. Now do you see it? I have a terrible time seeing these things. Again I recognize that I am um, older. So I like to just use the find function. It just makes it easy for me to find. What am I looking for again? You saw I'm using my tools. Home tab, find, here's my find navigation and it said customer uh, oh, 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 customer support. Go back. Maybe I <laughs> made a mess. There it is. I'm on the first page. So there it is. There it is right there. I'm going to close that. There's customer support. It says about the middle of the page. And the instructions, I was trying to be nifty and show you a trick. I, you probably could have found it quickly by that point. I've clicked at the end, I've put my insertion point, and by clicking at the end of customer support, I'm going to press the enter key. They told me, and I need to be really precise on this, online troubleshooting. Now, I want you to notice that I did not capitalize that O in online, but as soon as I pressed the space bar, Word evaluated that and said, oh, no, 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 that first uh, word in any sentence needs to be capitalized and so when I pressed that space bar that's when it made the change okay now I'm typing troubleshooting Oop, if I can spell that right troubleshooting and it is important the grader will mark it wrong if it is uh, not spelled correctly okay I've pressed the enter key and let's see, it also told me to type technical support. So here goes technical. I, I did a lowercase t, but watch when I hit the space bar. Word evaluated it, corrected it, and now I moved on. So I'm sorry, technical support. And then it said do not hit enter after that. That was easy. That was step three. Whenever we've done something good, we want to save that work. Right now, let's. I'm going to go back to my taskbar down here, and I'm going to go back to my instructions. Number four, replace every occurrence of the words web space site with the words website. Three items should be replaced. Okay, so it's telling us that already. I am going to minimize this, and I'm going to go to this document. Now, folks, 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 folks. Start at the top here, that's where I'm going to click, but don't just manually change this. Use your skills. What if this was a 20-page document and you needed to make that change? You would not want to have to scan and find if there's going to be all kinds of mistakes if you do that. Use your tools because you will be faster. You'll be going home early while everybody else is staying late because you know how to use these tools. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to be on the Home tab and you're going to click on Replace. And up here where it says find what, if there's something there, just start, it's selected, which means when I start typing, it'll automatically delete it. So I'm looking for the error, which was web space site. That was the problem. And I'm going to replace it with web site. Now in the simulation, they taught you to click find next, and that would help you locate this web space site and decide whether or not you wanted to press replace. That can be critically important because sometimes you are looking for something that's very common and you really don't want to make that change universally throughout the document. It can cause all kinds of kind of mess ups, right? In this case, this is pretty unique situation. Anytime I can't imagine a situation where I would have these two words web and then space site where I didn't want it to be website together. Plus, they already told me that there's only three occurrences of those. So instead of find next and then replace, find next and then replace, I'm just going to click replace all. Word confirms that it replaced three of those. And so I'm going to click OK. 
You may be asking yourself right now, what if it had replaced 150 items, 27 items? That's when you go, oh no, oh no, I've messed up, right? Undo. Undo is your friend. Now, I don't want to have to undo 157 times. What number did I throw out there? A million, right? I don't want to have to undo that many times. In that case, I would be very thankful that I had saved my work prior to making this change because what I could always do is I could close this and I could close the entire document without saving and then I would know, okay, I got to start with that step and repeat that step. You see what I'm saying? Okay. However, we did that step successfully. Save that. Let's go back to our instructions. And I know I've saved at step three. You see what I'm saying? Or I'm sorry, it was step four. So if I mess up step five, I just won't save it and I'll just reopen it, right? So that way I know I've start step five again. It says find the word opportunity and change the second occurrence of the word opportunity to pleasure. All right. Well, we have kind of a lot of ways uh, that we could do this. We can just find it in the document and we can change it, right? And we could type over the top of it. But let's be fancy. Let's use our tools. I'm going to click replace and it said find the word opportunity. Opportunity. And I want to replace it with the word pleasure, but not the first one, only the second one. So I'm going to tell Word to find it, and there it found it right away. And I'm going to tell it to go ahead and find it again. In other words, don't do anything to that. Find the next occurrence. There it is down here. And you see how it did not change this one? Okay, this is the one I want to replace. And so replace, and it's finished. And I can just, you know, double check as I look down through there. I would appreciate the pleasure of meeting you. Okay. Did I do good? Did I complete that step? Then let me go ahead and save. And I'll go back to my instructions. And what step are we on here? Now, step number six, check the document for spelling and grammar errors. Absolutely. No names are misspelled. So if we come across a name, just ignore anything that says it's an error. Correct any misspelled words and address the grammatical error by changing the word receive to receiving. Ignore any other refinement concerns. Now, um, if you are using an older version of Word, the steps will be slightly different. I'm not saying complicated. I'm just saying they're slightly different. They won't match with what you learned in the simulation and in your book. So this is one of those cases where there's just a little bit of a difference. I, I like to begin by going to the top of my document with my insertion point. Remember, any action that we take starts from there, right? So that's where it goes from. So I like to just start at the very, very top of the document. Now, what am I doing here? How could I find this? Well, first of all, I'm looking for this editor icon, and it's so frequently used that it's on the Home tab. And so I can just click Home and then go right over here to Editor. But if you want to organize your thoughts a little bit, then when do you check spelling and grammar? Do you do it as you're making a ton of changes to your documents where you're still, you know, modifying it and it's actively changing? Or do you do it when you're kind of done and you're ready to, you know, have your boss look at it? You're kind of ready to finalize it. In other words, it's ready for review. You say, I think my document is ready to review. Would you look it over? But you don't hand it to them knowing there's 50 mistakes in there, right? It's ready for review. So across my ribbons, here's the tab that says review. And this is where, let me see it, right there, number one, number one task, edit, right, editor. So I'm clicking that right away. Word is looking at my document and says, eh, I give you like a B on that, right? Well, we want to do better than that. So it looks like there's already three spelling errors identified, and one grammar error, and we need to check these out. They could be right, they could be wrong. So let's click on spelling. It says, there's this last name. Well, that last name is okay. So I'm gonna, I'll just say ignore once. I could ignore all. Now it's found this word advertised, and that is messed up. That's not spelled right. So over here are some suggestions. I believe it should be past tense. The uh, makes me a perfect fit for the advertised position. 
I clicked it, it changed it, and it continued searching. Now it sees, and it kind of knows this is a name, and it's suggesting maybe we should capitalize it, but this is part of a web address. I'm not interested in modifying that. I don't want to mess anything up. I'll say ignore all this time, and I'm done. So all my spelling errors are resolved, but I still have one grammar error. So I'm going to click grammar, and this is where the instructions kind of alerted us that it said this word receive. Look at this. Currently majoring in CIS, computer information science, with a minor in statistics. I am receive. I am receive my degree. Nah. I am receiving my degree next spring. I'll give you a little trick. I would not have said receiving. I would have said earning. I am earning or finalizing. Um, you earn your degree. It's hard work. Own that. Own that. You earn that degree. Okay, anyway, let's do this. Receiving. There we go. So it's fixed that. I don't know. It gives us a, what, a 94%. It probably doesn't like, uh, you know, like the name of these businesses. But our major spelling and grammar errors are resolved. Did I do good? I did. Let's save. Let's go to the next instruction. I like to make sure, did we finish all parts of that instruction? Yes. So we're on step number seven. Here it says, use the thesaurus to identify a synonym for the word attention in the last sentence of the first body paragraph. They say first body paragraph because in Word, every time you hit that enter key, it, or somebody hit the enter key, is a paragraph. So they're trying to, to really explain to you in the first body paragraph. Replace the word attention with consideration. Okay, so that's step number seven. Now, you may remember this from the simulation. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for that word um, attention, right? And it said it's in the first body paragraph. So these are paragraphs, but this is the first body paragraph. So let's see. Credentials, advertised. Here's the word attention. I am attaching my vitae, uh, my vita for your attention. So in the simulation, they had you go through the menus to find the thesaurus. And if we, you can see it already on the screen, um, what you would think to yourself is, okay, I've kind of finalized the document. It's ready for review. Let me go to the review tab, and then I would find thesaurus. Now, I don't know about you. It's hard for me to remember all this kind of stuff. It really is. So I just remember one thing, right click, because right click will give me a menu and they say it's a context sensitive menu. It means that it's related to what you have right clicked on. If I right click on an empty part of the document, I'm going to get something different than if I right click up in these areas and I'm going to get something different if I right click on this word. I am focused on this word, so I'm going to right click on the word attention. What do I see? Well, I see synonyms, and it told me to find a synonym, okay? And I'm sorry, I was, I was about to say, where are my synonyms? <laughs> okay. So when I hover my mouse on synonym, now I'm not clicking, I'm not holding any mouse buttons down, I'm, I see here are some words, and, and I could pick consideration because that's what they want us to do, so I could go ahead and pick that. Just for show and tell purposes, I want to point out, here is that thesaurus. So if consideration, if none of those words were good, look at all of the choices that word suggested for you. And in the simulation, what they had you do is they had you go up to consideration, and they had you use the drop-down box and hit uh, insert. So you can certainly uh, do that as well. Uh, you could double click. Sometimes that's, oops, I said that. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. What happened? Okay. Don't, don't double click. That has always been a shortcut to quickly replace that. Uh, I don't know what happened there. Um, so I'm sorry. Right click, synonyms. I'm just going to pick consideration. And I'm left click. I right click to get the menu. From then on, it's left click from only right click to get the menu consideration there you go could you have typed it yes but that's not the point you're practicing your skills because in the real world you're not going to know 
to substitute, what word to substitute. They're not going to tell you that in advance. All right, did I do good? I did. You did. Let's save together. Let us do good together. Here we go. Onward, upward to step number eight. Here we are. It says change the document theme to something called Berlin. Change the document color to violet and change the document font to, I'm going to pronounce that, Candera. Hmm. Now, it says, note, if the Berlin theme is not available on your computer in the themes gallery, then click or select Browse for Themes and then select the theme for the downloaded uh, project file. So here's what they're saying. Let me minimize this. And this is our working document, and we're going to change for themes, and we're going to look for that Berlin theme. But let me minimize this for a second. Do you remember that one of the files that we downloaded was actually called Berlin. Now, you may not see this THMX. You may not see that. That's okay. And it, the icon is kind of weird on it, right? It, it's not a word icon. Well, a theme is a bundle of uh, presets. It's like, okay, this is what your font already is, and this is the color that those letters are going to be, and this is the size. You know, it has all kinds of settings prepackaged in there. Let's say you work for a company, and you know they always use their company colors for like big headings or, and subheadings. Rather than setting those things, every single heading and every time you create a document rather than repeating that over and over you would just package that as a theme so that you could apply the theme and those colors those fonts the font sizes those kind of things would just be done it just it would be like that so we're going to see that in our berlin document if for some reason i did not have that theme installed on my computer they have provided it however it does come by default with Word, so it should already be there. Let's go back to the document. All right, what am I trying to do to this document? Um, I'm kind of affecting what the design of it, would you say the design of it? I think I would say the design of it. So when I pick out my tab, I'm trying to design my document by applying, look at this, number one, <clears throat> excuse me, is the theme. And you saw this in the simulation. So I'm going to click on that drop down box. And I wish these were in alphabetical order, but they are not. So you're going to look through, and we're looking for Berlin. Come in, Berlin. Come in. There it is. So second column, one, two, three, four, fifth, fifth one down, one, two, three, fourth one down. Second column, fourth one down. All right, so I'm going to click that. And you can kind of see these themes that they have. Uh, this one seems to have kind of an orangey color to it, right? I'm going to click that. Now, did you notice what changed? I should have pointed this out in advance. These are some of our preset um, uh, headers. And they changed from being just kind of really plain. I'm going to undo. Do you know how to undo? I'm going to tell you the keystrokes and so you can impress your friends at, at and dinner parties and things like that. From now on, when you're playing a game, rather than saying, I want to do over, you're going to say, I want to control Z. Let's just control Z that because hold your control key down and tap the letter Z and it's an undo, right? I want to undo, okay? If you want to redo, it's a control Y. So you can say, I want to control Z that so I can control Y. <laughs> okay? When I controlled control Z, I took off that theme. I, I took it off. And look at my preset titles. Like there's a lot of blue, you know, kind of a dark blue, very professional, that kind of thing. So watch this now when I apply. I could control Y, right? Redo. Control Z to undo. Control Y to do. I want to control Z that so I can have a control Y, right? I'm going to, just to show you, watch those, watch across the top, watch those titles. Do you see that? See how the color changed? Okay, so now when I use those preset titles, those colors, those fonts, those, um, the font sizes, it's all prepackaged in there. Now, I'm not done yet. The next part of the instruction is they said we need to change the document to, um, would they say lavender? Violet. Um, it says change the document color to violet. And you might be thinking that they want the whole sheet of paper to be violet. Maybe a little confusing, but what they mean is in this theme, 
change the document packaging to violet. So you can already see that it's kind of like an orangey brown color. Well, over here, still under design, what am I doing? I'm affecting the design colors. Let's look for, here it is, look away down. I wish these, these are a little, eh, not totally in alphabetical order, but violet. Okay, here it is, and I'm going to pick that. Did you see what happened to my presets up here? See how they're changing now, and they're using that violet. I don't see at this point any violet on my document, <clears throat> but when I start to use these prefabricated things, you know, these uh, headings and whatnot, the violet and the fonts and all that will be there. Not done yet. The next part of that, I'm on step eight, is to change the document font to Candera. Now, how do I know what the font currently is? Well, if I click in any, any word, any, you know, whatever I want to know the font of, I just click inside of a word, and I go to home, it's showing me this is Arial. In other words, I can use this to change to a new font, but when I click on something, it also tells me what it's currently set as. So it, it's interactive in that sense. And it says that it's Arial. Now, we are going to change this to Candera, but we have not applied that theme to the text within this document. And since we have not applied that, that theme, we have applied it to the document, but this is just kind of a, what they would call the, the normal theme, and so we won't see it change. That's my point to this. So where were we affecting the themes and all that? Design. We're affecting the design. We set a theme. We change the theme color to violet. Now, here's my font. Not, not this font, not that one. Okay, I'm affecting the settings of the theme. So here's where I go for that. If I look down, there it is. Pick that. And did you see my presets kind of change? Oh, oops, let me not hover over them. Okay, so they, they've kind of changed. But none of those presets have been applied to my document, so still says Arial. But that's okay. Okay, is so that the end of, of that particular step? Uh, yes, I believe it is. Okay, so we've done good. We want to save, so that is saved as of step eight, and let us go back and on to step nine. It says click to place the insertion point at the blank paragraph. Remember, that's just a carriage return. That's the enter key. That's all that means, blank paragraph. Click to place the insertion point at the blank paragraph shown just above the experience heading on page two. Insert something called a continuous break. Hmm. Okay, we'll talk about that. Ensure that the insertion point is still positioned at the blank paragraph. Change the layout to two columns. So next, we're going to do that. Main document here, and it said place the insertion point. We're looking at page two, and it says at the paragraph mark. I'm sorry, let me get make sure I'm right. Click the insertion point at the blank paragraph. See this, do you see that? Let me scroll up a little bit. Do you see this? This is the paragraph, not even anything typed in it. Your English teacher will say, that's not a paragraph, but you are using Word, and Word considers any time you hit that enter key to be a paragraph. So that's a paragraph. I'm going to click before that, because that's what they told me to do. Um, let's see, and insert a continuous break. Now. Let me zoom out, because what is a continuous break? Well, a hard break, a page break, caused Word to say, don't put anything else on this page, start a fresh page. A continuous break is kind of the opposite. It says, I'm going to recognize this as a section, but I am not going to be visible to anybody in the outside world. This is going to be a non-printing insertion. It's going to create a section, and inside of that section, we can change parameters without affecting other sections of the document. Sections are extremely useful and widely used when you are editing documents. So I'm going to zoom in, and I want you to remember that all of this, look at the general layout of all of this. I want you to keep that in your mind. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to zoom in. 
And remember, it said, put our insertion point on that blank paragraph right before experience, and so we did that. Now, this is probably a little different because it says that we should, their exact words are to insert a continuous break, and you might be tempted, and I understand if you're saying, I should insert, right? Except that we are trying to modify the layout. When we uh, do page breaks, when we do continuous breaks, when we are inserting breaks, we are nine times out of ten, we are affecting, maybe ten out of ten, we're affecting the layout. And consequently, this is under the layout tab. So remember from your simulator, layout, and then you have this menu option called breaks. Now, remember when I said trying to remember all this is hard for me? That's why I try to remember, I tend to remember much more easily, control enter is a page break. And we've seen page break. Now here is column break, and uh, that we'll use that probably in just a little bit. But what they want us to work on right now is this continuous. Insert a section break and start the new section on the same page. It's a continuous break. Let's go ahead and insert that. Now, what just happened? This happened. Do you see that? Do you see this right here? This is a section break. No one can see this if I print the document. See how I, I turned off our non-printing characters. It would not display. I only see it when I am displaying these non-printing characters. See how important it is to turn those on? So what does that mean? It means up here above the section break is one section of the document and below that is another section of the document. I can control the layout above the section break and make it totally different than below the section break. My margins can be different above this section break than they are below it. My paper orientation, portrait, which is you know up and down versus landscape can be above, one can be above the section break and another below the section break. So these are pretty powerful because it lets you control the layout of these two different sections. Okay, so first of all, let me zoom back out because I want you to see no change has happened thus far. Okay, let's zoom back in. I just want you to see the layout of the document. Now, what is it, what else does it ask us to do? It said ensure the insertion point is still positioned at the blank paragraph. I need to click there again. Okay, the blank paragraph. And, um, and then change the layout to two columns. So below this section break, I am going to say that the layout is columns and it's two columns. Did you see that just switch to two columns? Now, if I zoom back out, let me get that third page. Oh, I don't even have a third page anymore because it now it was able to fit very nicely on that page. Before the continuous break, it's not two columns because we wouldn't want a cover letter to be in two columns. But for a resume, that's okay. So what did we do? We inserted a continuous break under layout breaks, continuous break, and then we clicked in the section we wanted to change, and we said columns, and we went to two columns. Cool, look at all this stuff you're learning. Have we done some good stuff? Let's save. We have done it. Let's go back to the instructions. Okay, so we have finished step number nine. Step number 10, scroll to the bottom of page two. Click or position the insertion point before the Deaton Holdings Corporation heading. Um, it says click at the insertion point before it, but on the same line. And insert a column break. Press enter three times to better align the text at the top of the right column. All right, so let's go back to our document. And I just want to, can you see this here, Deaton Holdings Corporation? That's what they're telling us. So what's the problem here, right? What is it that we're trying to fix? Why are we doing what we're doing? Because this is a very nice resume that Miss Amy Lane has, and she has her business, the company that she's, you know, currently working for, followed by a brief description, very nice. The next company that she previously worked for, followed by a little brief description, 
and then this just looks odd, doesn't it? I mean, here's the company name, but it it's separated from the nice description. And we just really want to move that company information over here to the top. Now, what's the common mistake? Enter, 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 enter. We don't want to do that. We want to create a break, somewhat of a hard break, almost like this page break. But we, we don't want this to go to a new page. We just want it to go to a new column. So that's what we're doing. Click to place your insertion point. Let me zoom in so you can see this a little better. I have placed my insertion point, see the flashing, right before the D in Deaton Holdings. What am I inserting? A break. I'm affecting the layout, right? So layout breaks. Now, we have, there's page breaks, there's continuous breaks, and now we're going to make a break in the column. And watch what happens. Watch the Deaton Holdings go up here when I insert the column break. And see this non-printing character? So I have a section break. That means the layout for this part is two columns. And I have a column break that pushed that part up to the top. Now, it's very, very close up against uh, my you know, address and name and all that. And so part of the instructions here, and I'm surprised I remembered that, it says press Enter three times. OK, so one, two, three. And it says that better aligns it. And it does. In fact, what I might do if I was doing this in real life is for a moment, I would turn off the non-printing characters so I kind of look at it. OK, that, that looks a little better, right? OK, so now I'm going to go back into editing. And so I'll, I want to be able to see those characters, OK? And I'm going to save that. Now, I said I'm kind of surprised that I remembered to hit that Enter key three times. So I want to give you a little cautionary note. Sometimes throughout these videos, trying to talk and do and explain and read the instructions becomes a little much and I miss something. I miss a critical step. Um, we'll see that when I submit it to be graded because the grader will immediately tell me, hey, this is wrong. You did something wrong. And so I will try to fix that at the very end of the video so I can maximize my points. When I make those kind of mistakes, I try to put a note on the video that alerts you so that you don't make the same mistake. But if you do, if you're following along with me and you go, hey, hey, Dr. McGora, you did not press the enter key three times, you know, be better than me, be better than me. You all are smarties. And so as smarties, I need you to kind of uh, help me out, actually, right? So if I make a mistake, you know, don't feel that you have to make that, that mistake, too. I'll try to notate that on the video. OK, so we did save that. I'm going to go back to the instructions. And goodness, look at this. We're already on step 11. It says add a watermark, selecting the sample one option. Now, here's the first time we've seen this. What if you're on a Mac computer? It looks like your steps are going to be a little bit different. So if you are using a Macintosh computer, you're going to want to follow these steps. <clears throat> Here's another cautionary note. If at any time you are unable to complete a step of the instructions because something is different, your computer is different, you're, I've, these are things I've heard from students, your keyboard is broken and it won't allow you to type a certain letter or number or whatever. You know what? Do as many of the steps as you can. Stop by campus. Do these steps on one of those computers so that you can finish the assignment and get all the points. And don't forget that Southwest Laptop Loan Program. OK, uh, I don't need to save. These are the instructions. OK, what am I saying? Add a watermark, selecting the sample one option. Change the watermark color to lavender. Not just any old lavender. Lavender accent one, darker 25%. We're going to see that, in case you are colorblind, they always give these tips. I know purple is especially difficult to see, but you're going to see this uh, label on the color, and they're going to help you find it because they're going to tell you that it is in row 5, column 5. Okay, So, so don't worry. If, if you do have difficulties with colors, seeing those colors, don't worry. We got you covered. It's going to be in the instructions. So let's do step 11. I'm back into my document, and it says add a watermark. Well, let me think here. I am inserting 
but really I think this has what maybe something to do with the design of the document. So I think what I'm going to do is click that design ribbon and I'm going to go down here to watermark. And I've got a drop down arrow. See the little drop down? Not just flat on top of it, but the little drop down arrow. And look at all this cool stuff. Confidential, do not copy, draft, and there I see sample. And it looks like I actually have a couple sample. I'm going to pick this sample one, but look at this cool stuff. ASAP, urgent, cool stuff. Let's click on sample one. <clears throat> now did you see? See it back here in the background? And so now, if I'm going to like email this around, I don't want somebody to take it out of context and say, oh, this was your finished product, or, you know, I don't want them to be able to delete that, you know, real easily. So I can't even select that. If I try to select it, it's not, nothing I can click. It's, it's in the background. It's kind of behind this. That's what a watermark is. Now, so far so good. I, I mean, I'm going to save a little bit, but I, I'm not done yet. Um, I got the sample one option. It says change the watermark color to that lavender accent one. All right. Well, remember design. And this is where we were doing all of our theme stuff. And that's where this watermark is. And in this drop down box, if you look down here, custom, custom watermark. And as I look, look at, I just like to look, look at all the cool stuff. You could change that instead of reading sample. You know, you could make it say something else that you wanted it to say. And here's my color. And right now it's kind of this light gray. But they wanted me to change it, not just to any old lavender, but to the fifth row and the fifth column. Now, this is a row one, two, three, four, five, and across one, two, three, four, five. So as I hover over that, do you see that it's confirming? This is lavender, accent one, darker, 25%. Whew, click. Now, if I click OK, it will close this dialog box and also apply the color. If I'm not sure if that's the color I want, I can just click Apply. And you see how it changed it? And now my OK option is actually gone because I, I did kind of the first step, which is Apply, and I need to separately close. Okay, that, that apply just lets me pick like this color, no, this, not, no, let me do another one, and let me keep looking at those different colors before I close. All right, now I'm cooking with gas, right? So let's save that. That's looking good. Let's go back to our instructions. That was step 11. Look at us go. Almost done. Here we are on step 12. Add a page border, selecting box as the border style, and a single line which is, they say, the first one shown. The color is lavender, accent one, darker, 50%, which is going to be row six, column five. And the weight of the line is a half point. Goodness, that's a lot at one time. So let's go back. Here we are. And it said we need to apply a page. Let me go to the second page of my instructions. Um, it said we need to apply a page border. Well, I'm still on that design tab with all the themes, the colors, the fonts for the themes, watermark, page color. Here's page border. So here's page border. And I'm going to start over here on the left. It said choose box. So there's box. It said to choose the very first line style, which is a single line. So I've got that. It says that the color of the line, well, here's color. And it said, click that, sixth row down, one, two, oops, two, three, four, five, is it all the way down? And then five across, one, two, three, four, five. Let me double check. Yep, lavender, accent one, darker, 50%. Choose that. There we go. And it says the line weight. See this width? That's what they mean when they say weight. They mean the width is a half point. That's good. Click OK and save. All right. Let's go a little bit further. We're on to step 13. So let me go back to my instructions. And you saw that, right? Did I point that out to you? Did you see the page border? Look how pretty. OK. Back to the instructions. 13. Select experience near the top of page two. Now we're going to use our presets and apply heading one style. 
apply Heading 1 style to the Education heading, modify Heading 1 style to include bold and 12-point times New Roman font. This is cool. So now you did this in the simulation. Now we're going to get to do it in real life. Here we go. It said select the word experience. Now I'm going to, here's a little trick for you. Double click. Double click selects an entire word. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so, so you can see. Okay. Double click. I'm going to select this word. See how it ends selected the whole word? You know what triple click does? Selects the entire paragraph. Oops. You have to do it real fast. Do, do, do. Three times really fast um, to get the whole paragraph. Double click. Selects. Go to home. In your styles here, we looked at the scrolling down. We looked at this as a pop-out box, but I haven't showed you this, which is another way to pop out a side panel of everything that's inside um, of that uh, quick list. And so inside of this quick list, hopefully you already see heading one up here. But if you don't, good things to know, click on heading one. So we click the pop-out box and then heading one and you see how it changed. Now, what heading one is, is it's a preset. It knows to make this aerial. It knows to make this 20-point font. Um, it knows to put space above it, space before the text, and perhaps space after. That would be multiple mouse clicks every time we wanted to apply this formatting. And so it's very convenient because they tell us to continue on and go to education. So here's education. And we're going to apply heading one. Same uh, font, same font size, same spacing above and below. These preset styles are very important to Word. If you type large documents like a, you know, a term paper, they can help you make a table of contents like that if you are very consistent in using your themes. Okay, now we're not done yet. <clears throat> Let me go back to this. It says select experience, apply heading one, um, select education and apply heading one, modify heading one style to include bold and 12 point uh, font. Now there's a couple ways, or 12 point, I'm sorry, Times New Roman. There's a couple ways to do this. If I selected this, um, uh, I could, you know, they're telling me make this 12 points, for example. And they told me to make this Times New Roman. Um, you could scroll for it, but once you've selected it, if you type, see how it's filling that out? And if I tab, okay, then it set that font, Times New Roman. If I click someplace else, Georgia font there. So Times New Roman 12, that, that's what I've, I've got. So now if I go up here to heading one, see this little drop down box right here? Uh, because look at what the font says for it right now, that display. It says it's still 20 because that's what heading one is. It's that 20 point aerial font. But if I click this drop down box, it says update heading one to match what I just changed that to. So do it. And I did it. Let's go back up and look at experience. This was heading one, and it updated that to be Times New Roman 12. So isn't that cool? So in other words, um, I can use the heading one that has all these presets in it to go around and you know consistently format things. But if I then realize a change, I can make the change to one of those items. I can use the drop down box. That's a benefit of having this pop out style is I can use this little drop down uh, box and update. Now if I did not want to do it that way you could instead click on modify and you could go through the dialog box and make some changes there. Okay like here's format right here and we could start to to modify the settings. Okay all right so far so good. Let's double check me now. I've done a lot of talking. How am I doing? I think I've got all that. But when we submit it for grading, we'll find out for sure. Now, it says, step number 14, insert a page break. That's a hard break. Go to a new page. What is it again? You see me doing my, my keystrokes here? Control, enter, control, enter. Okay, that's our hard page break before the education heading near the bottom of page two. 
modify document properties to include an author of Amy Lane and remove any existing author. Type job search, resume, and cover letter, including the commas, in the keyword search box. So document properties help you quickly identify, search for, find a document. So that's why we're going to put them in properties. They're also kind of like fields that you can then display on your document. So very cool. All right, so here we go. Back to our document. And they said, uh, and I'm going to get rid of this. <clears throat> they said scroll down to where we see education. Now, this looks not good, right? It's kind of hanging at the end of the page. And they said, if I'm not mistaken, to click insert a page break before the education heading. So there it is. If you need to, you can go to layout and then breaks and then do a page break. Or you can just simply control enter. And did you see that it inserted this page break? So it forced that to a new page. Now, what else did they tell us to do? Modify the document properties. Well, first of all, let me save that because that was good. And document properties, where are those? Well, they are associated with the whole document. And so it's going to be part of the file. A document is a file. So let's click on that file. And let's see, let's go to info. That's where I'm looking for. And as I look at all these things, you might overlook this stuff over here. This is our property, so don't overlook that. File, Info, Properties. Go to Advanced Properties. You might remember this from the simulator. Now, the current author is, is the name of our book, the Exploring Series. Let's delete that because this resume oops, belongs to Amy Lane, I think was her name, Amy Lane. And then they said, look, if you're ever searching for this document, it's going to help the operating system. Isn't this amazing? Because you're changing the, some key parameters of the file. So let's put our keywords to help us locate this if we have to. And it said, type in job space search comma space resume comma space cover space letter. OK. And OK, then I'm going to go back to my document and save. And I believe we just completed step 14. Woohoo! On a roll. Let's keep going. It says it's not only important to consider accessibility. We want our document to be readable to everybody. This is a job search so that people of all abilities might be able to read a document, but also because we are legally obliged to do so. Checking for accessibility does not mean that you must correct for every alert present, but you should consider each occurrence and determine how critical it might be for your intended audience. So check accessibility. It's possible that at least one concern could be presented. You will not change anything at uh, anything. Oh, you will not change anything at this time. So close the accessibility pane. All right, let's go back to our document. Now, when are we going to check for accessibility? Are we going to do it while we're actively editing and at every step along the way? No, this is probably, and we're going to be mindful of accessibility as we're working, always. But we're probably going to check it when it's ready for review, right, to make sure that we've done everything correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to review it, just like our grammar and spelling, right, we're going here. So remember editor, that's where we got to uh, spelling and grammar checking. There's our thesaurus. We could even check to see if we have enough words in our word count. As we look across, look at this, Word will read this out loud to you. Is that not so cool? And here's check accessibility. Have you looked at some of the other things? This is a powerful. You can translate the document into a different language. Now, I'm sure, I'm sure the grammar is going to be a little weird in terms of the order of words, but it's, that's pretty cool. Um, OK, check accessibility. So I'm going to go ahead and check that. Um, there are certain very specific accessibility things that you can check. I'm checking everything. Check accessibility. It says make your document more accessible. Improved analysis and one-click action makes it easier to reliably fix issues. Here's what they're saying. They're saying if they find something, they'll try to help you fix it. So that's cool. That's going to help you 
uh, be more understood, to reach out to more people. That's what we want, right? Okay. It says no accessibility errors. That's cool. The instructions said even if we found something that we were just going to kind of leave it as is. They obviously were expecting that there were no accessibility errors. So we're good. Let's go ahead and save that. Go back to our instructions. We didn't even make any change, but that's okay. It says um, step 16, save the document. Well, you know we've done that. Um, run the document inspector to check for issues close the dialog box without making any changes. So we need to run the inspector. So once again, um, this is something we're going to apply to the entire document. So let's go to our document. We applied properties to the entire document, right? I mean, to the file, to the actual saved thing that we're calling EXP 22 Word Chapter 1 HOE job that whole file. That's what we're talking about when we say file. So let's go to file. Remember that our properties were under info. That's where we went to properties and advanced properties. Well, this is also where other things relevant to the entire file are. We can protect the file. We can inspect the file. So it says before publishing this file, be aware that it contains document properties. Remember, we put the search words in there and the author's name. So it's letting us know that. It says it also contains headers and some custom data. That's OK. So go ahead and check. And it's an inspect document. Look at that. We could have done accessibility checking from here also. OK. And it says to check the document for the selected content, click inspect. What are we supposed to check for? Um, well, it uh, didn't say, so we'll check for everything. Look at that. It says, see, you've got some problems. may be some things you want to clean up. But it said, just close it. Don't worry about it. We're going to close it. OK. So they just want you to know that you can use that to find out like personal information that you have in the document. OK. So we close that dialog box without making any changes. If we go back to the instructions, Look at this, save and close the document, exit Word, and submit the file for grading. So here we go. I might have made some mistakes, folks. We're going to see. Uh, let me go ahead and close those instructions. I don't need to save that. This is our file. Big mistake that folks commonly make, and you're not going to make it. You're going to be successful because I'm telling you the inside scoop. Close this. People try to submit with this still open. And that is, is not good. You're going to get error messages because it doesn't let you do that. Second big mistake that people make is they're not paying attention to what they're submitting and where it's located. This file with your name on it, in my case, in the Word 1 folder, where is yours? Where is yours? That's the file that you want to submit. Okay. So I'm going to go back into my IT lab. Now, you know from watching the kind of overview video of a grader, if you haven't, then you need to, that you're going to go to course materials. Oh, it might have logged me out. Let me pause the video for just a moment while I log back in. I'm back. And so we're going, I've clicked on course materials. And I want to be patient. You might notice, see down here at the bottom, it will tell you what's happening. So it says it's waiting. There it is. We're, in this case, we're working on the Word Chapter 1. So I'm going to open that folder. All right, here's the grader. I'm going to open that again, making sure my pop-ups are enabled. Being patient. There it is. We've already downloaded the materials. We don't need to do that again. We don't need to preview the steps because we've been looking at the steps. What we do need to do is choose the correct file. So I'm going to choose that. Where did I put that? On my desktop. Now it remembered it. And I tell you what's going to happen with Word Chapter 2 if you're not paying attention. It will remember, your computer may remember to go to Word Chapter 1. And you'll select the Word Chapter 1 file and submit it to Word Chapter 2. You really got to pay attention. I also make mistakes. So I'm just kind of telling you what, what I mistakes I make, what other students make, so you can hopefully at least know what happened if you made the same mistake. 
here's the file with our last name, Word 1. Notice it even says Word, Chapter 1, Job, Double, Triple, Quadruple Check. That's the one. Open. Not done. Upload. Wait for Success. When you get Success, Submit. All right. Fingers crossed. Close. Oh, it closed it on its own. Okay. Chose to do that. <gasps> Look at that. Now, it says for this that I scored a 98.3. So I did make a mistake somewhere. This was only my first attempt at it. And it does go ahead and let me know that I passed. Hopefully, in your syllabus, you are using it not, a, not to read like a book necessarily. Here's what you do. Scan down to where you see detailed assignment, detailed explanation of assignments. Find greater projects or, you know, uh, my IT lab graders and read how I score these for you because there is a, this is a pass fail and there's a, a minimum to that. And so you want to make sure you're above the minimum. <laughs> but this is also about learning, right? I want to know what I did wrong. Don't you want to know? Because you might get 100, whereas I have a 98. Click on these three dots. Remember, I'm under course materials and I've navigated. Click on the three dots and I'm going to click view submissions. Folks, this is worth the price of admission right here. Here's my submission and I clicked it. Ah, okay. Now I want to look. Now, a couple things I want to point out to you. You can, if, if you have lost your original file and you're like, oh no, I don't know what I did with it, right? You're, or you're, you were working on it at home, now you're at a friend's house and you need, you can download the file that you submitted so that you can just make changes without having to start over again. Or, I mean, I don't have to download it because I've got it right here. I'm going to just correct this existing file, right? I don't want to have to do all that all over again. My goodness. Okay, so let's go back in. That's that's this. Um, let's see, extra and non-scored items. There's this live comment report. Now, here's what the live comment report does. Let me click that. It downloads this report to your computer. And so I'm going to open it. And it tells me at the top kind of some general stuff about the you know what happened. I'm just going to enable this as we do because what I, I want to understand is what went wrong and so I'm looking for any kind of comments in the report but if I zoom in on this first page this becomes much uh, even really helpful in Excel for example it says for paragraph style heading one ah, did y'all catch me on that? It says the bold that I did not bold it. Okay so First of all, now I know that, and that was the reason for a point deduction. Okay, here's another thing. Uh, it, those are great things over here on the side, but in this, this right here will tell me. If I had just scrolled down, look at that. There it is, number 13, and I can click this little drop-down arrow, and it says, let's see, for paragraph style heading 1, the bold was not applied and that was worth 1.667 and I got zero points for that right Ugh, unacceptable we we want that 100 so I'm just gonna minimize this I had opened this but then I closed it so let me go back to that exact same document I do not need to start over don't start over now do you remember where heading one was wasn't it this okay yeah Times New Roman 12 and so remember my little trick here. If I double click that, and what did I forget? I forgot to bold it, right? And so what did I do? Do you remember up here in the styles? I used this, this pop-out box, and I found heading one, and then I used the drop-down next to it, and I said update heading one to match, okay? So now it's bolded, and I can double check this was also, and see how it got that bold? It, it said, because I updated the heading and that was heading one, it applied it to everything that was heading one. Excellent. Save. 
close, always close it, don't leave that open. Let's go back, and I've still got my browser open, and I want to go submit that again. So let's see, I think if, uh, what should I do here? I could go back, but I think I just need to go to Course Materials. Did I click it? Course Materials, come on. What's going on here? Do I need to close this? We have a new interface as of this edition of the book, so please do excuse me if I stumble just a little bit. Um, there's a lot of similarities, but every once in a while something's just a little bit different. So um, Word Chapter 1 Greater, the, and this is hot off the press, this, this book, so bringing to you the latest and greatest because I want your skills to be up to date. So what do I need to do? I don't need to download all over again. I don't need to preview the steps. I just need to get it graded again. So choose file. Make sure I'm in the right folder. Make sure I've got the correct document. Open. Not done. Upload. Success. Wait for success. Submit for grading. And did you see how fast that grading was? I couldn't do it that fast, folks. This is excellent. Woohoo! Woohoo! Look at here. Yay me. Yay you. Because I have now demonstrated and you can follow along with me. And you know how long it's going to take you as well by following this video. 100%. What? what only two attempts. Not bad. So, Thank you for watching this video with me. I hope you have learned a lot. Um, I hope that this has helped you. What I try to do for this and for future videos is I try to mark uh, links to each step so that if you only need to view one particular step, then you can go to that particular step. So if you're watching this in YouTube, look in the comments uh, and expand it so it's to do show more so that you can see the exact step that you need to go through. Thank you so much, folks. I hope you're enjoying this. This helps each of you work at your own pace. Some students will go faster. Some will go slower. We all get to the end the same, and it's about the learning. So I hope this helps. Thank you so much, folks. Appreciate you greatly.